Welcome back Veteran Nation fans and uh, with today's video we're going to be showing you a video of something that I took and this is the type of harassment that when you get a service dog this is the type of things that will occur and in this video I'm going to set it up just a little bit. This was taken aboard uh, Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center 29 Palms. The individual in this video is a Marine Corps Major. This was at a government building 1707. There should have been no problem whatsoever of me using or bring my service dog. It's absolutely allowed on government uh, installations. And um, this individual just, this was at the end of a large section of harassment. I believe this was the fourth time almost in a row of this guy harassing me. Um, this was at my child's Cub Scout meeting, uh, a place that where I had absolute uh, right to be at. And uh, my parents were actually behind me when this was filmed. Uh, you'll see my child in the video. He's sitting in front of me. And uh, this was just uncalled for. Uh, the Marine Corps, this is a major in the video, even though he's in a Cub Scout uniform. The Marine Corps did investigate this. But, like, what the government does is it investigated itself. It found it did nothing wrong. And also, in the course of that investigation, it's going to be kept hidden. No one's ever going to know what the the um, outcome of that investigation is. So this goes to show you like how the military protects people who are clearly, clearly, clearly breaking federal law. So uh, let's go ahead. I'll get that video up here, and we'll watch it together. It's not very long. It's only about 44 seconds. Uh, I will pause it at a couple points, and you can watch for yourself. Okay, like I said, this was like the fourth incident. Uh, every single time, uh, at least I called the MPs. And in this case, we, he and I both called. And every single time the MPs came out, you know, they verified that the dog was a service dog and told them the dog has absolute right to be here. So you have to stop. Uh, you have to stop this harassment. But we'll, we'll keep on going here. Okay, I'm, I'm pausing it right here because of I want to address what he's talking about in terms of children with allergies. At no point were any children with allergies ever pointed out to me. Uh, if they were, I would have clearly kept my dog away from them, even though my dog is a poodle and is a hypoallergenic dog. So the only way anyone is going to get any type of allergic reaction out of my dog is if they are petting my dog, grooming my dog, really more grooming and brushing, uh, Petting really isn't going to cause anything. It's not going to really cause that dander to, to go up. My dog gets very matted, needs uh, frequent grooming, fre frequent um, uh, baths, because that's just the way poodles are. Uh, but had he identified, he or anyone else identified any children with a allergy, I would have kept the dogs away from him. Uh, it's interesting because after this, it got word back to me that the Marine Corps Community Services aboard the base were, when they realized that they couldn't use this way to keep the dog away from me, they were, or away from the events, uh, what they were trying to do then was say the dog was vicious. My dog is a 17-pound poodle. You'll see it in some of the other videos that I have. There's no way my dog would do, even if it bit a child, would not do any significant damage. And my dog has, it's got no uh, tendencies towards any type of violence. When my dog is being petted by any type of children or anything like that, and it's uncomfortable, it literally goes underneath the, underneath my chair or underneath the table or will jump up in my lap and want me to protect her. She, for her being a stress and anxiety dog, for me, she's got just as much stress, stress and anxiety, if not more. Uh, she, she's very good at highlighting stressful situations, which is what she's trained to do for me. Uh, and it's because she's feeling stress and anxiety. So she is constantly communicating to me when we're in situations, if she is uncomfortable. 
but back to the video, there were, were no children identified with allergies. And even if there were, that is not a, a reason to kick someone with a, a service dog or a, a seeing eye dog. It's no reason to kick them out. What you, you do then is you isolate both groups and make sure that they don't interact. But you don't tell one, no, you have to leave. That's discrimination. So we're going to go back to and finish off the video here. Just 10 seconds left. Does that mean I am a disabled Provide. person with my service dog? Stop harassing me. You are Thank mistaken. You, you need Thank to understand you. what the law states. I'm disabled. Leave me alone. Okay, I'm going to rewind this a little bit. Um, because I really want you to listen to my voice. This is the start of one of my... Uh, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, whatever you want to call them. You can hear it in my voice. After this, I was visibly shaking. I was having an attack. Uh, my dog started alerting to me. Uh, I, I was thankful that my parents were there because this was the first time they ever actually witnessed one of my attacks. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and replay this again. Right here. Listen to my voice. So that's the video. That's the type of things that uh, people, when you have a service dog, you will likely come across something similar. Uh, there's a lot of people out there with knowledge uh, that they think is the truth, and it's not. In fact, that guy says, you need to know what the law states. Yes, I do know what the ADA states. I, I have my dog. I have my dog. I, I know exactly what the Americans with Disabilities Act says about my dog. <laughs> Trust me. And anyone with a service dog is going to know better than someone who has no connection to any service dog whatsoever. So this is just an example of the type of things. Uh, this is why in the attack video, this one happened before the attack video by almost a year. So this is why when uh, the video of where I get attacked, I'm able to stay incredibly calm. I was able to mentally prepare for that because of things like this. I, I can identify now uh, when I start to have an attack. I can start uh, doing things to mitigate that attack. I can do so many things now. And that's why for those of you out there who are struggling with any type of mental issue, anxiety, PTSD, anything, if you're going to get a service dog, they will absolutely help you. You still have to work on your stuff, but this will absolutely help you and get you on much better footing to be able to deal with the challenges of everyday life. And I'll tell you, it was the change in my life when I got my dog was instantaneous. And for those of you who are going to ask where I got my dog, uh, customcanines.org. Go to customcanines.org. Uh, there's a lot of other really great places out there that will help you with a dog. If you're a veteran, Custom Canines will work to get you one free of charge. They, you might have to wait for the dog to be trained, depending on how, you know, how detailed the training needs to be. But uh, there's a lot of incredible people out there. And if you join the Veteran Nation Facebook group, I post a lot of the places. I repost a lot of their stuff there. Uh, also on Instagram, at Vet Nation Show. On Instagram, I'm there as well. I'll post a lot of service dog things there, and it's all to help you. It's all to help me. These things are how we're going to take back our mental health. And I'll tell you right now, where I am in my, in my journey is so far along as compared to what it was when I was first diagnosed back in 2016. Uh, I like I look back now, I am in much better control of my emotions. I wasn't a violent guy, but I would have attacks like what you saw in that video where I would become shaky. I would start to, I, my voice, my hands would start to shake. And, you know, I would very much, a symptom of me is I very much adhere to this is what the law says or this is what I know is right. So I'm going to stay within this box and, and work from this box. And, uh, you know, it, it serves me well, but nowadays I have a much better control of my emotions. Uh, it's way harder for me to get an attack. For now, if I get an attack, it's because something happens and I did not expect it. I didn't see it coming. Uh, with this video and some of the others, 
I can see where it's going to come and I can do things that's going to head off that attack. So, and, and the dog is absolutely a part of my, my, my PTSD plan. So when I am going to have an attack, I'm, you know, signaling for my dog to jump up on my lap, to cuddle with me, to try to get my heart rate down, to try to get that, that, um, uh, reaction to, to just, if not go away, be very mitigated. So I highly encourage everyone out there that if you're dealing with anything, get a service dog, reach out, join my communities, tell your stories, because the more of these type of things that we can share, the better we're going to be. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And as always, thank you for being worth serving.